Greetings everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If you are new here, or have been sitting in the shadows, and you enjoy what you are hearing, please show some love to the subscribe button, and don't forget the notification bell. Set that one to all, that way you'll be reminded of every time I upload a video, which tends to be daily. Please take a look here at the screen and wish everyone a happy birthday that was born in July. To all of you on this list, I hope you have a very awesome day and an even better birthday. Thank you so much for being a huge supporter of Back to Ashes. If you would like to know how to become a member of Back to Ashes or would like to buy me a coffee, all of that can be found down below in the description box. With all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled Fictional Scary Stories. Right after this intro, there will be an ad. Before the first story, there will be an ad. And after that, there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes. Because all of these stories are fiction, some of these stories may contain material not suitable for all. Listener discretion is advised. Summer is finally here and our swimming facility has opened for the season. Since I've been in the gig for a while, I figured it would be a good idea to post a reminder for everyone. I've been a lifeguard for five years now, and I've had my fair share of accidents. Stupid kids, even worse, parent, and chlorine practically running through my veins. My first reminder is always to stay safe, and of course, my second is to have fun. Let's get started. Indoor pool. First thing. For any body of water, if you have little ones or anyone who is not a strong swimmer, always remember to put them in a life jacket. U.S. Coast Guard certified, or whatever your country certification is, is always what we use at my pool. And we always recommend them if you have non-swimmers in your facility. No running on the pool deck. This one is a given. The tile is slick and you can fall, causing breaks or sprains, concussions, etc. And as we all know, lifeguards can't control if you get followed. The back bathroom in the family locker room is always locked. Anytime it is unlocked, don't use it. It's not meant for you. Always keep your eyes on your children. I feel like I shouldn't have to remind parents or guardians this, yet every year we have a couple code Nemos calls over the walkies. As protocol, we clear the pool and keep everyone on the deck to make sure we get a head count, and hopefully, we can find your child inside the building. What happens if we don't? We all call EMS or the police station to make sure they didn't wander out of the building. While the pools are cleared, we also search to make sure they are not at the bottom. Common sense rules are some of the most broken, unfortunately. Like, no horseplay, no drinking or spitting the water, and being generally courteous of fellow swimmers. We don't want you or someone else getting injured because you decide to frisbee a kickboard to your friend. Yes, that often happens. Also, the pool has chemicals in it, and drinking it can make you very sick. Don't stick your face too close to the surface of the water. You will be grabbed and taken, and we cannot prevent it. If it starts to storm at all, we have to clear the pool. Our generator is outside, and it can get struck by lightning. So, don't get your trunks in a twist when we tell you to wait 30 minutes. Please and thank you. If there is any bodily fluid in the water except blood, we have to clear the pool. I promise you, we'll be able to get back in. You just need patience. Don't acknowledge the girl in the hallway leading to the locker rooms. We know she's there. We know she keeps asking for help. Pretend like she doesn't exist and she will not cause you any harm. It's sad I also have to say this, but please, don't go near our chemicals or the pump room. We handle very toxic and dangerous chemicals 
that most people don't have any training in using. If a man approaches you asking to help him with the chemicals, do not engage. You will not come back. Lap lanes are first come, first served. No, we cannot reserve a lane for you. Tacking this on as well. Yes, the water is always this cold. No, we can't change it, even if we wanted to. Please keep only two people per lane. Don't get greedy. Sauna and steam rooms are 16 plus only. They get too hot for little ones. If you're in the steam room, the faces in the steam won't hurt you. If you're in the sauna, the old woman in the green towel is just sleeping. Do not wake her up. As for pool equipment, like fins, kickboards, and pool buoys, use them in the way that they were meant to be used. Like I said before, no frisbeeing anything across the pool, no walking fins, etc., you will fall and break something, and no one wants a trip to the hospital. Don't stay underneath the mushroom water feature for more than a couple of minutes. You will come back out, and it will not be the same place you were before. Hanging on the rim of our basketball goal is a terrible idea, because it's only weighted down by sand. If you dunk and hang on, it will fall on you. I've seen it happen before. When the pool closes, it is the lifeguard's job to make sure everyone is gone before locking the doors. If you try to stay after we turn off the lights, you're on your own. Of course, there are always accidents, so if you're forgotten or left behind, follow these rules. Find a secluded, dry area to stay until the morning guard finds you. They'll be here at 4.30 a.m. Try to keep yourself as warm and dry as possible. If you hear them start singing, under no circumstances should you go to them. They will drown you faster than you realize. And then we have a mess to clean up in the morning. If you hear anyone walking around outside, check the time. No one will be coming to save you until 4.30 a.m. Don't listen to what they say. Don't trust them. And don't move from your spot. We try to feed them as often as possible, so most nights they don't cause problems in case someone gets locked inside, but don't assume you'll get away. Always stay alert and active just in case. Since I have been lifeguarding for a while, I've also had or heard of my fair share of emergency situations. These are almost always caused by people not following the rules which shows how important they are. I responded to a 16-year-old boy who decided to run on the pool deck and not watch where he was going. He slipped and hit his head on the ground and had a major head wound. He was concussed and bleeding heavily. We performed first aid and called EMS, and he made a full recovery. An eight-year-old girl jumped up and grabbed the rim of the basketball goal tipping it over and crushing her underneath. The wren caught her by the neck, effectively crushing her windpipe. We performed first aid to the best of our abilities, and EMS was able to take over. Her status is unknown. A young mother came up to me about her missing child. We performed a code Nemo, searching the entire facility, but we were unable to find them. The mother stated that she turned around for a split second and the last time she saw her child was when they were playing under the mushroom in the family fun pool. There was an elderly man that got forgotten by a family member and locked in the pool deck overnight. He was found in pieces floating in the instructional pool. Do not approach the singing. A 12-year-old girl wandered into the sauna when her parents weren't looking. Accidentally, she woke the woman wearing the green towel. Hours later, and after an unsuccessful Code Nemo, the two closing guards found her sitting in a sauna with most of her facial features torn off. She had no nose, eyes, ears, or mouth, and her throat was slit. Well, I think that about covers it. If you have any more questions or concerns about water safety, please feel free to ask. I have plenty more information at my disposal. Always remember, stay safe, stay alert, and never go swimming alone. Enjoy your summer.
This next story has six parts to it in which I will read straight through, but I'll also pause and label when the new parts start. The Corona Virus Dr. Anna Petrova peered into the microscope, her brow furrowed. The sample, a fragment of an ancient artifact, pulsed with an unnatural violet glow. It held the inscription, Tempus Fugit, Time Flies. Anya, a renowned chronobiologist, has spent years chasing rumors of this relic believed to possess the power to manipulate time itself. Now, the inscription seemed to writhe, the letters morphing like living things. Suddenly, the lab plunged into darkness and a surge of energy crackled throughout the air, the artifact erupting in a blinding violet light. When Anya regained her vision, the world was different. The clock on the wall ticked erratically, its hands spinning backwards and forwards in a maddening dance. News reports broadcasted the same event on repeat. A plane crash, the footage skipping and stuttering. People outside moved in a jerky, stop-motion fashion, their screams a garbled mess. Panic clawed at Anya's throat. The artifact had unleashed a temporal virus, unraveling the very fabric of time. Days bled into nights, and the concept of now dissolving into a chaotic vortex. Food spoiled instantaneously, her reflection in the mirror aged years in a blink. The one vibrant city became a desolate wasteland, monuments crumbling in the blink of an eye. Anya, the lone witness to this temporal decay, was trapped in a personal hell. Aging at an accelerated rate, her body a grotesque reflection of time's warped flow. The final chime of a grandfather clock echoed throughout the deserted street. Anya, now a frail, withered husk, collapsed. Her last sight, the inscription on the artifact, glowing malevolent in the decaying world. Tempest Fugit. Time had not just flown. It had devoured everything in its path. Part 2. Echoes of a Fractured Past Anya's consciousness flickered, a faint echo into the void. The world was an abstract tapestry, woven from fragmented memories and the chilling hum of the manufacturing artifact. She was neither alive nor truly dead, a spectral observer, trapped in the wreckage of time. Then, a flicker. A sliver of reality materialized, a busting marketplace filled with vibrant sights and sounds of a bygone era. Anya, a wisp of her formal self, drifted through the crowd, unseen, unheard. This was a moment, a snapshot from the past, ripped from the timeline by the Corona virus. Anya witnessed snippets of time, laughter intermingling with the ever-present hum of the artifact's corrupting influence. The fractured glimpses intensified. She saw the artifact's discovery, its destructive power unleashed upon different civilizations throughout history. Each time the same horrifying consequence a world unraveling at the seams, consumed by temporal chaos. A horrifying realization dawned. She wasn't just a witness. She was a fragment, a ripple effect of the virus's temporal distortion. The artifact was rewriting history, weaving her essence into the very fabric of its destructive path. A desperate hope flickered within her, perhaps by understanding the origin. A solution could be found. She focused on the moments before the artifact's activation, searching for a way to break the cycle. A lone figure emerged, a cloaked individual, their face obscured by shadow. 
They held a vial filled with an emerald liquid, its property seemingly at odds with the artifact's violet glow. In that instant, everything shattered. The past dissolved, the marketplace scene replaced by the desolate wasteland. Anya, the fragmented echo, was left with a single burning question. Was the cloaked figure the key, or merely another victim, caught in the crossfire of time's corruption? Part 2 introduces the following elements. Anya's fractured existence. She becomes a spectral observer trapped within a distorted timeline. Glimpses of the past. Anya witnesses the destructive influence of the artifact throughout history. A glimmer of hope. The cloaked figure holding the vial hints at a potential solution. The story emphasizes the ongoing struggle against the coronavirus's corrupting influence. It avoids graphic descriptions and focuses on the mystery surrounding the artifact and the potential way to stop it. Part 3. The Paradoxes Embrace Driven by the fleeting vision of the cloaked figure, Anya, a wisp of her formal self, clung to the last vestiges of her resolve. The artifact's corrupting influence throbbed in the distance, a constant reminder of the fractured timeline and the impending doom it heralded. Days bled into what felt like centuries. Anya, adrift in the chaotic tapestry of time, witnessed countless realities, thriving civilizations reduced to dust. Technological marvels warped into grotesque parodies. The constant hum of the artifact served as a maddening soundtrack to the temporal apocalypse. One fragmented glimpse offered a sliver of hope. Anya found herself back in her laboratory moments before the artifact's activation. The cloaked figure stood there, the vial clutched tightly. But this time... Something was different. Anya, a spectorial echo, could interact with the physical world. Mustering all her remaining strength, she reached out, desperation fueling her touch. A surge of energy crackled as her hand brushed against the vial. Images flooded her mind, a forgotten inscription on the artifact, a hidden chamber containing the vial's counterpart a crimson liquid pulsating with an opposing energy. The cloaked figure, revealed to be a guardian of time, spoke in a voice that echoed throughout the fractured timeline. The balance must be restored. Only the crimson vial can counter the violet's corruption. Suddenly, the vision dissolved. Anya found herself back in the desolate wasteland, the knowledge of the crimson vial burning bright within her fragmented essence. A single unwavering purpose took hold, to find the hidden chamber and restore the balance. Fueled by newfound resolve, Anya navigated the treacherous terrain, the warped remnants of the world a constant obstacle. Days turned into weeks, the ever-present hum, a relentless reminder of the ticking clock. Finally, guided by the echoes of the vision, she stumbled upon a hidden message within the ruins of a once grand library. Deep within, a chamber lay untouched, the air thick with an ancient energy. And there, nestled on a pedestal, glowed the crimson vial, its presence a beacon of hope in the decaying world. Anya reached out, her spectral form trembling with anticipation. As her hand grasped the vial, a blinding light engulfed her. The world dissolved into a maelstrom of colors and sounds. Then, silence. Anya found herself back in her laboratory, the artifact pulsating with a faint violet glow. The clock on the wall ticked normally. News reports broadcasted a live feed. The plane crash averted, the world seemingly back on track. Had she succeeded? 
a faint hum resonated from her pocket. The crimson vial, a constant reminder of the ordeal, offered a silent confirmation. The battle may have been won, but the scars remained. Anya, forever altered by her journey through the fractured timeline, knew the coronavirus's threat loomed. She was now the guardian, forever vigilant, the sole witness to the potential consequences of tampering with the delicate fabric of time. Part 3 concludes the story with the following elements. Anya regains agency. The interaction with the vial grants her a chance to influence the outcome. The Crimson Vial, introduced as the counterpoint to the artifact's destructive power. Anya's sacrifice. She becomes the Guardian, forever bound to protecting the timeline. This ending avoids graphic description and focuses on the restoration of balance and the lingering responsibility that comes with yielding such power. Part 4. Echoes in the Hourglass Years passed. Anya, forever marked by her ordeal, dedicated her life to safeguarding the recovered Crimson Vial. The once vibrant scientist now bore the physical and mental scars of her journey through fractured time. The world, seemingly oblivious to the averted disaster, thrived. Yet, a constant unease gnawed at Anya. The artifact remained, a dormant threat pulsating with a faint violet glow. One day, a tremor shook the lab. The artifact pulsed erratically, the familiar hum returning with a renewed intensity. News reports broadcasted scenes of temporal anomalies, duplicated individuals, objects vanishing and reappearing. Anya's heart hammered inside her ribs. The coronavirus, it seemed, was awakening. But this time, something was different. The fragmented glimpses revealed a new element, a shadowy figure manipulating the artifact, their motives shrouded in mystery. Hope flickered. Perhaps the cloaked figure from the past wasn't the only guardian. Anya delved into historical records, searching for any mention of the shadowy figure. Her quest led her to a hidden society, protectors of the timeline sworn to secrecy. They revealed a chilling truth. The coronavirus was not a random anomaly. It was a weapon, a tool, used by those seeking to rewrite history for their own gain. The shadowy figure was a rogue agent, attempting to exploit the artifact's power for nefarious purposes. Anya, no longer just a spectral observer, was thrust back into the fight. With the help of the hidden society, she embarked on a mission to thwart the rogue agent and prevent another temporal collapse. Their pursuit led them through the labyrinthine corridors of time, a constant battle against the ever-shifting reality. Anya, utilizing the knowledge gleaned for her past experience, became a skilled navigator of the fractured timeline. The final confrontation unfolded into a desolate future, a wasteland ravaged by the unchecked power of the coronavirus. Anya faced the rogue agent, a battle not just of physical prowess, but of wills. The fate of the timeline hung in the balance. In a desperate act, Anya used the Crimson Vial, its energy clashing with the violet glow of the artifact. A blinding light erupted, engulfing them both. When the light subsided, Anya found herself back in her laboratory, the artifact dormant once more. Exhausted but resolute, she knew the fight was far from over. The shadowy figure remained at large, a constant threat. Anya, forever bound to her role as guardian, vowed to protect the delicate balance of time. Part 4 introduces new aspects to the narrative. A shadowy figure, a new antagonist manipulating the artifact for personal gain. 
the Hidden Society, protectors of the timeline offering aid to Anya. The fight continues. Anya becomes actively involved in safeguarding the timeline. The story emphasizes the ongoing struggle against those who seek to exploit time for their own purposes. It avoids graphic descriptions and focuses on the responsibility that comes with wielding immense power. This concludes the four-part story of the coronavirus. It leaves room for further exploration of the hidden society, the motives of the shadowy figure, and the potential consequences of continued attempts to manipulate the flow of time. Part 5. A Fractured Legacy Decades had passed. Anya, her once vibrant features etched with the weight of time, continued her solitary vigil. The artifact remained inert, a constant reminder of the battles fought and the potential for future threats. News reports displayed a world moving forward, blissfully unaware of the potential disaster averted countless times. Anya, a ghost in the machine, observed from the shadows, a silent guardian forever bound to her duty. One day, a young researcher named Kai stumbled upon Anya's hidden laboratory. Intrigued by the cryptic notes in the dormant artifact, he reached out. His curiosity peaked. Anya, hesitant at first, sensed a spark of the same determination she once possessed. She revealed the truth. The coronavirus, the fractured timelines, the hidden society safeguarding the delicate balance of time. Kai, initially skeptical, grappled with the fantastical nature of her story. However, the evidence, the historical records, the hidden chamber containing the crimson vial, slowly chipped away at his disbelief. Anya saw in him the potential for a successor, someone to carry the torch when she could no longer bear the burden. Their training began. Anya, drawing upon her years of experience, guided Kai through the complexities of time manipulation. They delved into historical archives, learning about past encounters with the coronavirus and the tactics employed by the Hidden Society. One pivotal lesson involved a simulation, a glimpse into a future where the shadow figure had succeeded. The world was a fractured landscape, a horrifying testament to the consequences of unchecked temporal manipulation. Witnessing this nightmarish scenario solidified Kai's resolve. He dedicated himself to mastering the skills necessary to protect the timeline. Anya, her physical form weakening with age, found solace in the knowledge that her legacy would endure. Years later, on her deathbed, Anya held Kai's hand, a faint smile gracing her lips. The artifact remained dormant, but a tremor in the air, a subtle shift in the hum of the world, sent shivers down Kai's spine. He knew with a chilling certainty that the fight was far from over. The legacy Anya entrusting to him, the burden of safeguarding the delicate fabric of time, now rested solely on his shoulders. Part 5 concludes the story with these elements. Passing the torch, Anya trains Kai to become her successor. A glimpse into the future, a chilling reminder of the potential consequences of failing to protect the timeline. The fight continues. The story emphasizes the cyclical nature of the conflict and the ongoing responsibility of the Guardians. This ending avoids graphic descriptions and focuses on the transfer of knowledge and the weight of responsibility that comes with safeguarding the delicate balance of time. It leaves the narrative open-ended, allowing for further exploration of Kai's future encounters with the shadowy figure and the potential threats to the timeline. Part 6. Echoes of the Past Kai, now a seasoned guardian, stood vigil in Anya's laboratory. 
Years of training that honed his skills, but the weight of his responsibility pressed heavily upon him. A tremor, a subtle shift in the familiar hum of the world, sent a familiar unease coursing through him. The artifact, dormant for decades, pulsed with a faint violet glow. News reports broadcasted scenes of temporal anomalies, duplicated individuals flickering in and out of existence, historical monuments explicitly appearing in the present day. Kai knew this was no ordinary anomaly. Guided by Anya's teachings and the cryptic notes she left behind, he delved into the hidden archives of the Protector's society. There, he discovered a chilling message, a prophecy about a convergence, a point in time where the fabric of reality would be most vulnerable to manipulation. The message also hinted at a weapon, the Corona Shield, an ancient device capable of amplifying the Crimson Vial's power and potentially severing the rogue agent's connection to the artifact. Legends spoke of the Corona Shield being hidden within a forgotten temple, lost to the sand of time. With a, del ugh, desolute, with a desolute heart, Kai embarked on a perilous journey, following cryptic clues and navigating the treacherous current of the fractured timeline. He traversed through different historical eras. He witnessed the rise and fall of civilizations, the echoes of the past, a stark reminder of the consequences of tampering with time. His quest led him to a hidden chamber within the ruins of the Forgotten Temple. There, encased in a protective field, lay the Corona Shield, a magnificent device pulsating with an ethereal energy. As he reached for it, a distorted figure materialized, the shadowy agent. A fierce battle ensued, a clash not just of physical prowess, but of wills. The agent wielding a shard of the artifact unleashed temporal distortions, attempting to disorient Kai. Drawing upon his training and Anya's legacy, Kai countered with the Crimson Vial, his energy clashing against the shard's violent glow. The chamber thrummed with chaotic energy. Kai, seizing an opportunity, activated the Corona Shield. A surge of crimson light engulfed the room, severing the agent's connection to the artifact. The distortions ceased, the air regaining its normal hum. Exhausted but victorious, Kai stood amidst the ruins. The agent, defeated and weakened, vanished into a swirl of temporal energy. The Corona Shield, its purpose fulfilled, dissolved into shimmering particles. News reports confirmed the anomalies had ceased. The world, blissfully unaware of the averted disaster, continued its course. Kai, a silent guardian, knew the victory was temporary. The artifact remained, a constant reminder of the potential threat. However, this time, he wasn't alone. The message from the archives mentioned a hidden network of guardians scattered throughout history, each playing a vital role in protecting the timeline. Kai, determined to find these allies, embarked on a new mission to build a united front against those who sought to exploit time for their own gain. Part 6 emphasizes the following elements. The Convergence, a critical moment where the timeline is most vulnerable. The Corona Shield, an ancient weapon capable of countering the artifact's influence. A network of guardians, the existence of a larger force dedicated to protecting the timeline. This ending avoids graphic descriptions and focuses on the ongoing struggle against those who seek to manipulate time. It introduces the concept of a wider network of guardians, leaving the narrative open for further exploration of their roles and the potential future conflicts they may face. This story is to be continued, part seven to follow.
and that, dear listeners, is going to bring a close to these fictional scary stories. Um, this one was going to be about an hour long, but because this one is in part, I want to leave this story alone. The next one that's coming out has a lot more parts, trust me. It's almost as long as a book. Anyway, thank you all for your support and for being a part of the Back to Ashes community. With all of that being said, I wish you all a very good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Until next time, stay safe. Peace, love, and light to you all.